I told you I was catching up with the with some post uh, insulting people. No, I'm joking. I wasn't insulting nobody. <laughs> I was just catching up with stuff. Know what I mean? Uh, catching up with with people. With post, catching up with posts. Okay. Yeah. You didn't do any more bullet points? No, not today, Ben. I didn't. I promise I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, I'll hold I you to that. Today. It's been a shitty day. You see how I look right now? Like, look at me. Look at me. Like, look at that. It's all on the mind. Looks good. Looks good. Fire me after today. Mm -hmm. Like, some people I'm, coming I'm, I, I'll sick myself. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sick myself like Katina out. All right. For those that are just joining, Katina's just come back from a run. How long did you run, Katina? Well, you rang me when I was out running, so I ended up only doing 5Ks, and I came back because you were like, hey, where are you? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. This old man, he doesn't even want to hear that I'm kind of like, you know, getting out there doing my thing. All right, Ben. Sorry, no, I did 5Ks, which is my normal. Like, you know, oh. that's my baseline. So I'm glad I could do it because it's raining out here. So um, I, I've actually been kind of like thinking maybe not, maybe, maybe not. So the fact that I managed to do 5Ks, I'm actually proud of myself. You know, I did it. Oh, so I, I look like crap right now. I just came from Iran and I'm actually quite sweaty. So, But don't worry about it. Ben doesn't mind. <laughs> The other end of the country, it doesn't matter. And as it happens, I set myself. Nobody can fire me. I fire myself if I have to. So, yeah, let's talk about this. What are we talking about? Whatever you like. Any questions? Just you don't fire like the questions me. in anyway. Bananas, right, huh? Fire the questions in. Um, as you come what? on the stream, just type them through. Let me see what I can find from Okay, guys, listen. Um. Just as usual, if you guys have got any questions, whether to do with um, anything to do with infection control, uh, UTIs, you wanted to talk about UTIs, urinary yeah, tract infections. Yeah. I think people, well, COVID, there's vaccinations, there's HIV, there's urinary tract infections, though. Um, there's wounds, there's honey, um, for treating wounds. Um, just whatever people like. People are interested in urinary tract infections? Yes, no. Um, uh, microbiome. Uh, <clears throat> that's a New Zealand topic, that one. <laughs> it's, not a it's not a New Zealand topic. In, in, in Africa, I don't know, but we could try it when I'm not too tired so that I can fire some questions. But okay. the first time I heard it, I was like, nah, not my piece of cake, but you never know. Um, um, yeah, I, I, know. Huh? I think Africans as a general rule in Africa, Africans in Africa have particularly good microbiomes and so their immunity is particularly well protected because of it compared to much of the rest of the industrialized world. Okay, Ben, do you just want to tell us what you mean by microbiome? What are you talking about? Like, come on, you can't okay. just come giving us some big terms. As, that we're... As, humans, as humans, we're made up with about um, 10 trillion tissue cells 10 trillion that's you, you and i 10 trillion there's a bit less of me up top than there used to be but 10 trillion tissue cells but as well as the 10 trillion tissue cells we also have about 50 to 100 trillion bacteria as part of our normal ecosystem and they're both on our skin uh, maybe 10,000 bacteria per square centimetre on our skin after we've had a shower. And we have the bulk of it, even our lungs, which many people think are sterile, they're not. But our gut flora from the stomach all the way down, the intestine, it, that's where the bulk of the 50 to 90 trillion bacteria are. And they, um, there's about... 500 to 2,000 different species of bacteria within that. And we never used to pay much attention to our fecal flora. It's just yucky stuff. We don't have to think about too much. But we now know 
that the mixture and composition of that microbial or bacterial flora, it's other things too, but bacteria is very common, uh, the composition of that, the different species and their ratios are a key component of our immune system. They also alter our moods, um, depression and such like, happiness, depression, uh, they seem to have an effect on our intelligence, risk behavior, and other such things. So what we eat is who we are, because that feeds our microbiome. And the more fiber we eat, so fruit and fiber, it's the fiber that feeds that 50 to 90 trillion bacteria in the lower part of our bowel. Whereas if we have simple sugars like chocolate that gets absorbed in the top or fast foods, I'm not sure of Kentucky Fried and such like, that's absorbed in the top part of our intestine where there's not many bacteria. And so that's when we have just fast foods that um, starves all the microbes in our lower gut and they're key for our metabolism, development, immunity, um, and many, many other things, eczema, dermatitis, cancers and such like. That's it in a nutshell. We are a microbial garden. We are a microbial garden. We are what we eat. And a large part of that is also modified, especially from a very young age, including how we are born. So for millions of years, when we're born, we come out the vaginal canal and we get a mouthful of mother's perineal, groin flora and or fecal flora. And that becomes the heart of our new immune system and our gut for it because we swallow someone's babes. Those of us that are born by cesarean section bypass that whole process and we get a different gut flora. And so that, um, that feel that, that creates people that are born by a cesarean section tend to have more eczema, dermatitis and obesity. Um, so Is that, that for real? Yes, that's for real. It's quite measurable. Mm. Really? Okay. Yeah. And so people that are, that's where Africa is in general is at an advantage because I think you probably have more more fiber and such like on your diet in Africa. And people used to live in the industrialized world, used to live more rurally and have cats and dogs and animals because of dirt and they got more more microbes, more species, and they eat more fruit and vegetables. Now, more people in the industrialized world live in large cities and skyscrapers, have no contact with dirt or animals, and tend to eat more fast foods, and it starves their microbiome, and they also tend to take many more pharmaceutical products, pills and such like, which also has a major adverse effect on the microbiome and makes more predisposed to infection. Which is why I've said from the beginning that people in Africa are likely to have a richer microbiome and less likely to catch COVID. Okay, all right. Let's find something a, a bit. Uh, nobody's asking any questions, guys. Have you got any questions? Morning, Marvin Panganai, DP Ako. Hi, how are you, Shadrick? Oswege uh, Mazorodze. Hi, how are you guys? Listen, if you've got any questions, Ben was just talking about his favorite topic, uh, microbiome and all the stuff that comes with it. You are what you eat and all that stuff. But um, if you've got any questions to do with anything that we've discussed in the past or anything to do with what he's just said right now, have you got like some symptoms of something that you're not sure of and you want to ask him, ask away. And um, you... I've had two offers of $10 million over the last week. I didn't tell you that. From but, uh, uh, yeah, um, I, saw, I saw one of the emails you forwarded to me. I was just like, come on, Ben, I don't want any money right now, please. I don't uh, want money. I just want... Another one, another one today. <laughs> so Did you get these, um, these online talks, people must look up and... Um, and get to contact me that way and they're complete scams of course and um offering me 10 million but um because a relative um um died and right. so known but the same name as mine if i just send my bank account details um and name and address etc the money will be yours. yeah i saw that one no thanks i don't want your money ben i you can keep that one <laughs> i'll quote you on that 
كده يعني. Uh, not that one. I don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that one. I want the one that I'm gonna wake for tomorrow and the day after and this weekend. That one, yeah, that's mine. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, you can keep it. I don't want, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, guys, so if you've got any questions at all. So, uh, Ben, I don't know what you wanted to talk about, like in terms of like UTIs. Do you have a PowerPoint that you want to pin here or you can just talk from? No, I can just talk on it. It may or may not be so applicable. Once again, in the industrialized world, things are getting so people are uh, in the hospitals and often doctors and nurses as well are starting to rely on technology more and more and more to make diagnoses. And often it goes too far. And so there's a thing called a urine dipstick test, a little bit of plastic, and only costs about 30 cents each, which they detect white cells and such like. And um, so if somebody goes and they're feeling a bit off color quite often, the nurse or the doctor will put this little dipstick in your urine. You'll pass some urine, they'll put it in. And if it's full of white cells, uh, white blood cells from the bladder, because it's in the urine, they'll assume you've got a urinary tract infection and treat it with antibiotics. But a urinary tract infection is or should be only a clinical diagnosis. If you have symptoms, which is pain or difficulty, it's called dysuria, pain or difficulty passing urine, that may well be a urinary tract infection. It could be an STA, STD, but normally it's a bacterial urinary tract infection, which you've caught from yourself, and that may well need treating. In actual fact, if the symptoms are not too bad, we know antibiotics first started being used about 1943, when they developed then, about 1943, and but before antibiotics are available, if somebody got a urinary tract infection, so frequency going to the toilet lots or pain and difficulty passing urine, then 98 out of 100 people with what's called uncomplicated or ordinary urinary tract infections before antibiotics were available, 98 out of 100 self-cured, it cleared up itself. Uh, two out of 100 went on and got kidney infection which is really serious. You may get vomiting and um, such like a lot of blood sometimes in the urine and nausea, um, maybe a temperature. And um, so kidney infection is very serious. It can cause blood infection or septicemia, but that's only two out of a hundred people with um, symptoms of urinary tract infection. They nearly always self cure. And um, that can take up to 12 days. And that is why people um, in the industrialized world tend to give antibiotics so people don't have to put up with it. the pain and difficulty for 10 days. Sometimes people say to me, Ben, you're not a woman. You wouldn't know what it's like because it tends to be women, especially, but not only sexually active women that are more prone to getting urinary tract infections. However, there have been a couple of surveys, uh, randomized trials done in Germany where when somebody's a woman between, I think it's about 18 and 65, when she's had a urinary tract infection with dysuria and frequency, pain and difficulty, rather they were divided into two groups. One group was given a top shelf antibiotic called ciprofloxacin, and the other group was given an anti-inflammatory, which is ibuprofen. It could have been paracetamol, but they used ibuprofen. And neither, they didn't know what pill they were taking. It's called a randomized trial. They were given one or the other, pill A or pill B. And after three days, exactly the same number of people were cured of their urinary tract infection. And about 70 out of 100 were cured. So we know that the body, 98 times out of 100, clears the bacteria from our bladder. But the trouble is we're left with symptoms. So rather than treating the bacteria, because we know that the body will get rid of the bacteria, why not just treat the symptoms and then we don't breed antibiotic resistance and nor do we take, change the person's microbiome, which in turn um, mucks up our whole physiology and many, many other things as well. So just one way of reducing antibiotic use 
is to consider using an inflammatory and um, anti-inflammatory rather than treating the bacteria itself because we know the body will clear, clear the bacteria. About a third of the time, you need to go on to a different treatment, whether it was that antibiotic or whether it was an anti-inflammatory. Right. Okay, Ben. So whilst you're talking about uh, those symptoms to so say we treat the symptoms, hang on, just uh, let's just answer this. Yeah, you, you've got that one. I did lose smell. This is James. Thank you, James. I did lose smell of food for almost two weeks, but after that one day, I find myself again hearing smell. Is this, was this COVID? So that's an interesting question. Thanks, James. Um, when people get COVID, including my son, who's in London, and his girlfriend, uh, they've just had COVID. Uh, they first got it about 10 days ago. And when I spoke to him about three days later, uh, my son, who's 30 now, he was um, he had 80% lost his taste. 80%, uh, he said, oh, it's really weird. 80% lost his taste. And, but now it's almost fully back again. So it can happen that way. I have a niece in Switzerland who got COVID in March and she still has not got her taste back again. But it is not just COVID that gives us a loss of taste and smell. It's also, some people get that with um, uh, influenza or other illnesses too. So many other illnesses can have side effects, including loss of taste and smell, but COVID is particularly um, a bigger proportion of people that have had COVID are more likely to lose taste and smell. Once again, you have to be careful when there's something like at the moment with COVID, when there's very large numbers of people with COVID, you're going to hear more, even if a relatively small proportion of them have a loss of taste and smell. When there's a very large number getting it, there's going to be more of them. So you hear more of that, if that makes sense. 1% of a million, um, say there's a million cases of COVID, 1% of a million, is a lot more than 1% of a 1,000. Uh, so very common infections if they have unusual side effects. And COVID definitely does, and, and smell and taste is way up there. We're more likely to hear it. So I would hope, James, that um, uh, you will get it back. Sometimes it can take a year or two, but many people, they will start getting it back after a, um, after a week or two or three to six months or so. So don't give up hope for a good wee while it'll likely come back but we won't know and we've only had he says it's come, come back isn't he he says i did lose smell of food for almost two weeks but after that one day i find myself again uh hearing smell like he can smell now oh what? it's just a nerve receptor and they normally grow very slowly but they normally re regenerate again mm -hmm. Was this your son, did you say, Katina, that um, lost taste? Did no, no, I'm, I'm I'm reading that comment. This oh, guy, yeah. right, he is saying he lost, uh, you know, a smell for, uh, of food for two weeks, for almost two weeks. But after that, oh, one day. Coming back now, yeah, so that's great. That's being great. Able to we can't help. say for certain at all if it was COVID, but we know COVID, it is very common or really quite common for people with COVID to lose taste or smell. So I would say, for instance, if you had a cough or a bit of a temperature um, and respiratory and on, were close to people that did have COVID, then it almost definitely was COVID. Um, if you had no other symptoms at all, we have no way of knowing. It quite likely COVID because half the people with COVID have no symptoms at all. So it quite likely was. Um, anyway, the main thing is 100% you um, got your taste back again, which is fantastic. It's pretty hard for people that lose all, all taste and smell. Tatiana uh, did do that. I think that's the only symptom she had. Uh, like later on, she was like, Mom, I didn't have a sense of smell uh, and taste for like two or three weeks. But uh, when we were asking her, she didn't know. She wasn't aware of that. She had uh, all those symptoms. She just thought it was normal. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm yeah that's good main thing it's come back again mm -hmm. yeah all right so all right any more COVID questions i just checked uh your link here you know the one you sent to me this afternoon 
Yes. The nice thing. Oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's an interesting one for those that want to too. So, which one was that? Uh, vaccines. So that yeah. I just wrote something in the um, press in New Zealand on vaccines, um, and uh, in many ways, it's a miracle of science um, that came about because of the billions and billions of dollars that um, in those countries, uh, the comparatively wealthy countries like the United States and Britain, who have been hit so hard by COVID, they have been um, especially motivated to spend billions and billions to try and find a vaccine that may work against COVID. And it took um, six months, well, six months to a year, and um, now they're, um, it looks as though there's a vaccine way up, there's a, there'll be, within over the next three or four months, there's likely to be six or 10 vaccines come to market. Um, they'll all be different. Um, and some will be better than others. So the very first one that came out was from Pfizer, large American pharmaceutical company. And that seemed really good. They started off, they'll all be very competitive against themselves because there's a huge amount of money to be made. And the Pfizer one, they said, was 90% effective. Um, but there was a trouble with it. And the trouble was it had to be kept at minus 70 degrees, minus 70 to minus 80 degrees. And there's very few or comparatively very few, and I suspect even less in Africa, freezers that go to minus 70 an ordinary domestic freezer is about minus 18 so this needs a special freezer well, before or... you even go to africa talk about our own south auckland here come on yeah. let's talk about our so own... in, auckland, in auckland at the university there may be a couple of minus 70 degree freezers no gp practice will have a minus 70 degree freezer well, we're so... from keep on to maintain our temperatures in icu ben so you can talk about like just an, an ordinary person at home how do you do that how do you keep minus 70. Yeah. you can't because exactly. that and that's what i'm saying so that you can or you could get dry ice if you've got somewhere that can manufacture dry ice and put it in a um, polystyrene container and put the dry ice in with the vaccines and but what i'm saying is it's pretty cumbersome and you can't send it by air freight or sea freight because it's a dangerous substance dry ice so i'm just giving that as an example although it may have been 90 to 95 percent effective there's a major yeah. downside to it. then along came another vaccine company and um, they said no we've got 95 percent and you can store it at just ordinary freezer temperature. And so suddenly that becomes flavor of the month. Everyone wants that one. Then there's another one still came out today or yesterday from Oxford to say, um, uh, no, you can just keep it at four degrees for a month. And um, initially theirs looked as though it was only about 60% effective, but they then found, uh, or it's very early data, but it now looks as though so the Pfizer one and this latest one from Oxford, Oxford in England, I think it's fantastic. They were going to charge about $3 only, United States dollars, per vaccination. They were giving it as a gift to the world, which is oh. amazing. The Pfizer yeah. one, the Pfizer one was about, from memory, 30 or 40 US dollars. Uh, they were there, they spent billions on it, but they were there to make money. The Oxford and England one. Just giving that an example. Although Sorry, maybe... Sorry. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> they wanted to help the world, um, which is a fantastic gesture. And so they were essentially offering it at cost, um, um, which is really, really good. So it'll take a while till we get the big enough numbers. Now, in the United States, that looked as though it was working across all ethnic groups and all ages, which is really, really good because many vaccines don't work nearly so well um, in the people that need it most. And that may, for instance, be in the case of COVID, anyone over 63, especially if they've got um, uh, underlying illnesses like diabetes or high blood pressure or cardio, 
pulmonary um, issues. So we will learn a lot more about that. Some of the, one of the vaccines that come out only takes one dose. Two of them require two doses within three weeks of each other to get started. And another one looks as though the one that came out today or yesterday looks as though they're learning. That was the British one, actually, I think, that normally you give two full doses uh, the first time around, three weeks apart. But by accident or design, I'm not sure which, they found that the first dose was half the second dose. It worked a lot better. And so oh, that's a bit strange. But if that's the way it works, that's the way it works. Um, ben. Thank you, Goodman Tembo, uh, for your comment. Uh, you love this program, guys, health-wise. We've learned a lot from the shows. Thank you. Nice to hear the feedback. Yeah, uh, hi, Ben. Hi, 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 baby. Hey, so, Ben, I mean, we did have a discussion about this last week, and we say that an effective vaccine takes... That's right. A minimum, you say, you, I think you did go up to like two years this time. You said a minimum of two years, which I agree with. So this thing of like, we we are barely like a year, like um, I think COVID came. So COVID, um, we must really put this in perspective. COVID-19 has only been infecting humans. It started off, the very first started off in China, maybe November, December. Last. Exactly just on a year ago yeah. and although asia had been largely affected by sars with a 10 percent mortality rate death rate um so they were pretty especially taiwan did fantastically well taiwan was kicked out of the world health organization when china joined china said we have to kick taiwan out and um, as China can can do, they're a bit ruthless like that. They said Taiwan belongs to China, so Taiwan can't stay in and call itself a country. And I, I just find that interesting. Taiwan, after SARS, set up all their laws and their structures. So if another one ever comes, that they will be really well prepared for it. And so the main things they developed were mask wearing, um so they had the ability uh, with government support to produce million there's about 24 million people in taiwan and so they encouraged industry to produce millions and millions of masks and they were forbidden from exporting them until there's an excess of masks in taiwan that was number one number two all cell phones um could automatically be traced by law, and that data was kept for up to 30 days. Originally, it was 15 days, and there were 14 days, then they changed it to 30 days. So if, for instance, Katina was walking around down Auckland, and subsequently Katina developed COVID, all the people she'd had close contact with could immediately be traced, and they would be sent a message. And they could tell who she had close contact with because mm. the law had been changed to allow anyone's cell phone that had come near to, to Katina's, uh, they would get a message saying you've been close to COVID. So there's a loss of privacy for a month, um, but the law was it could only be used for tracing COVID. So you didn't need these other methods of trying to write it down or special apps and everything. It was automatically done on the phone. That was a major one. And the third major one was that um, Taiwan used to be a military dictatorship um, until I think the late 80s. And they then, after a lot of blood was shed, became a full democracy. So the young are not, um, some people think Asians tend to be very quiet and obey authority all the time. The only mm -hmm. way, that's right. The only way Taiwanese got their democracy was a lot of young people died in the process of fighting for it and they're fiercely independent, fiercely protective of democracy. So it was quite a big issue for them to say, well, we believe the trade-off is good for the law to trace cell phones for a month when required only for a positive COVID case. And they, a lot of their ideas got sent up to government for how to track COVID. And so there's a very open dialogue between the government and trust between the government and the population. 
and that's helped the whole thing work. When people isolated, um, if they had um, COVID or were told to isolate, there was a really large fine, 5,000 US dollars, if they did not isolate. And that's what the population wanted. And so they've only had seven deaths from COVID and they've got uh, 24 million people. Yeah. And the more air you breathe and share with somebody with COVID, the more likely you are to get it. And Taiwan has a land area one seventh the size of New Zealand. And they've still only had seven mortalities and their borders are not closed. They let anyone come in from any country, uh, unlike New Zealand, but with some exceptions. If there's a major, major outbreak, for instance, early yeah. on in Wuhan, they stop them coming in. And other countries, they categorize into three groups. And if it's a reasonably high risk country, they say you must um, self isolate at home for whatever it is, two weeks. And um, there's a 5,000 US dollar fine if you break your own curfew, your own isolation. And with all of those, seven deaths only out of 24 million people and a very yeah. high density yeah. population. Uh -uh. So, yes, that um, it's a week old now, but the, uh, oh, there's, you put that one up as well, have you? Uh, Katina, this is a fogging machine I'm um, involved with. Um, I brought it out from the United States to um, New Zealand, and that completely sterilizes a room um, with a steam like fog. It just uses hydrogen peroxide and vinegar, basically, but it completely sterilizes a room in 40 minutes. So, mainly for use in hospitals or uh, rooms that have had COVID people on them. And the chemical machines are expensive, but once it's bought, the chemical cost of that machine uh, is about sixteen dollars New Zealand dollars, so about eight US dollars per room for the chemicals to completely sterilise the room. Um, uh, any other questions? Um, that's called Sani Pure or Outer Pure fogging machine. Um, on that one. Uh, it was just an article I wrote for New Zealand Media. Any other questions at all on anything at all? I'm um, being abused here. You're being what? That was Tatenda. No, that was Tatenda. <laughs> like, you, you say to people, don't don't knock on my door. I don't want anybody to knock. And then she oh. comes. Oh, what a wonderful daughter you have. Yes, That's Ben, but then people need to learn to follow instructions. What a wonderful daughter. What a wonderful <laughs> daughter. I know. She's like, I, I, I didn't hear that. I'm like, I told you I'm doing a live for like 30 minutes or so. How long have we been going for? 33 minutes. That's perfect, Ben. If there are no yeah. questions, do you want to keep going? I mean, I was going to say, Justin, which are the main symptoms of UTI for people to be aware of? Because there's so many the main times... symptoms of urinary tract infection. It's not necessarily what people think. The main symptoms are frequency. That's running off to um, go to the toilet lots to pass urine. That can also be caused by stones, though, a kidney stone or a bladder stone. As it comes down the urethra, it can just tear the inside of the mucosa a bit, and that can make you go running to the low as well. Um, so, But normally, you can feel the stone as it slowly goes down the urethra because it's just cutting that mucosa, and it's, it comes out a lot slower than the urine does. So people can normally feel the, um, the stone coming through. The main um, um, symptom of urinary tract infection is pain and or difficulty passing urine and going more commonly, going to the loo more commonly. They're, they're the main ones. A urinary tract infection in itself is not smelly, turbid urine. That can be completely normal. So smelly, turbid urine is not symptoms of a urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infection, you may have smelly turbid urine, but just because you've got smelly, smelly turbid urine, if you've got no other symptoms, it is not a urinary tract infection. Okay. Um, no, the reason I'm asking is because, you know, when we're like in the rest homes, people often rush to just chat antibiotics straight away the moment. Right. Yeah. 
We have yeah. nearly all the old people in the rest home on antibiotics because they go UTI, 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 UTI. Yeah. So the reason yeah. I'm asking is because we want to know like the main uh, symptoms. Okay, sorry about that. Let me just mute. So can I ask Jizzy, um, what causes itching blisters uh, on the hands? There can be many reasons for that. Um, some allergies will do that. Um, so sometimes it's like a contact dermatitis. You may have a, um, a, a chemical, I'm not sure, a sealer or something, if you're trying to seal something in the house or something like that. Sometimes that can do it. So it can be an allergic type response. Um, if it's only on the hands, it can be an allergic type response to contact with a chemical somewhere else. Um, if it's on the hands and on the feet, there's something called hand, foot, and mouth. You might get little blisters in the mouth too. Uh, it tends to be in children, it's a virus, and that just clears of its own. And occasionally, um, blisters on the hands, not very commonly, can be caused by a tinea or fungal infection, especially if you've got cracks between the toes or something like that. Um, but just of its own, um, it's um, quite often, without seeing it, it's hard to tell, but it's quite often an allergic type response uh, to a chemical. So just bear that in mind. Be very aware if you've got any contact in your work or at home using chemicals for disinfection or something, be very aware and uh, try and keep away from all chemicals for a while and see if it goes of its own accord. Uh, but it can be intensely frustrating having really itchy hands. Um, also, Tanash Chizzy, once again, you ask, also itching on the lower body from the waist going down. Um, that's a little bit harder. Often they're above the waist, actually, these itchy things. Um, so um, there are a number of things. Is there, it could well be an allergic reaction. Um, and are they little papules or pustules? Um, have you eaten anything differently to what you normally eat? Have you been out in the garden? Have you had contact, like a contact dermatitis, if you've had uh, contact with plant material or leaves that you wouldn't normally have contact with from the waist down? Um, that, that could set those off as well. So certainly not only an allergic type reaction, but it could be. And if it is an allergic type reaction, try, um, and I'm assuming it's not so, little sores, it's just itchy patches. Um, then for a start, try any skin calm that may work. So if you have things like aloe vera, you can rub that on, or any moisturizer, you can try rubbing that on. Sometimes you think it's working, but not sure. Try putting it on one leg, but not the other, or one hand, but not the other, and see, actually, when I had the two together, it doesn't make any difference. I thought it did. Well, actually, that's really, really good. Um, it helps more than I thought. It only It's only working on my left hand. I only put it on my left hand, it's quite a lot better. So I'll now put it on both hands because I know it's working. And just don't forget, if you've had it for some weeks and it's only come, I'm assuming you haven't had it before, so this is the first time it's come, uh, there's likely to be a trigger for it. It can either be a new workplace or if you're living in a new place, um, that can be something to think about. And I think Katina's got something that I sent to her about nine months ago. Um, I'm not sure if you can post that at all um, on those. <laughs> I can send it to you again if you wish, Katina, on my thousands of files. I know where it is. On um, um, Things like scabies and such like can also be possibilities, but there's a, a methodology to follow through to try and uh, narrow it down a bit. Um, I hope that if you have any more questions on that, Tanashi Chizzy, just um, uh, either give some more clinical details or ask some more. But basically with soothing, if you've got anything soothing to put on, it might even be hydrocortisone if you have access to that. Soothing things can be really good. Um, if it makes it worse, stop straight away. If you're putting a soothing cream on, um, if it doesn't make any difference after a day, don't bother persevering with it. If it makes it worse, stop straight away. 
If it doesn't make any difference, move on and try something else. What works for one person may make another person worse. And so it's just trial and error. Also be aware some soaps will set people off. So try stopping all soaps for a week completely and see if it makes a difference because our skin needs its natural oils on it too. So just try all soaps in case you're allergic to a new type of soap, for instance, and stop all soaps for a week and see if it makes any difference. If it makes no difference, go back to the soap again. doesn't matter. Um, it would be nice to see a close-up picture. Um, oh, maybe. yes. Uh, well, um, Tinasha Cheesy, if you send uh, a WhatsApp message yeah, here, okay. Oh, and mm -hmm. then you send, you take a photo of what you've got. If, uh, come on, I can't even see here, Ben. Oh, no, my just goodness. Just an area of the skin, take a photo of it, and send it to Katina, and she can send it on to me. And, and if it's something obvious, we can um, make, make more comment on it. Mm -hmm. ha very happy to do that. I'm not a dermatologist as such, but I've seen many skin conditions, and... Um, I may be okay. able to get a notification. Yeah, that number, I, I would also ask things like, has anyone else in the family or in the same place as you're living, have they got um, itching too? Because if they have, it's more likely to be something infectious. And that could be a parasite or it could be a, a virus or something else. So it's quite important to know if you're the only one um, and if there are other people living where you are, uh, does anyone else have it as well? And... Have you had it before? Does it come back at the same time each year, roughly? Because that may tie up with a pollen type allergy or something else from a plant that only comes up at this time of year. So I hope mm. that's some thoughts to think about. Okie dog. You're going to have your dinner, young Katina. Uh, did you say what are you having? Or I don't. I didn't really oh. want. To Huh? What are you having? And um, what, she what made did... rice salad and pork. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds nice. Rice mixed with veggies and whatever. It took them three hours. They've been cooking for three hours. I'm telling you, they've been cooking for three hours. So, uh, Tinashe, oh, if, Tinashe. Yeah, yeah, send me what's up, and then once I get your number, I'll I'm like, I'll connect you with Ben, and then you 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 can talk to Ben. I mean, once he looks at the photo, he can give you a call. Yeah. Yeah, but go through my number and then I'll, I'll connect you with him. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Tanash, and good to ask. So um, just let me know also at the same time, has anyone else um, where you're living had it? Have you ever had this before? If you've had it before, has it tended to happen at this time of year? And have you started a new job? Does it involve chemicals? Just things like that, just to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't forget. Uh, I, I, I mean, change of seasons. I, I, I mean, I get all these allergic reactions each, each time we we move into a new season. Yeah, that's right. Many people uh, do. Many people do. House, when I first moved in here, I had a swollen face from cat fair because the previous owner used to have a cat. Yeah, so you're allergic to cats. Okay. You know. Oh. Yeah. So clean your house, Ben. It's always spotless, Katana. I know. It may have once lapsed. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. It may have once lapsed. We yeah. had somebody visiting once, and it, um, I think it had just lapsed at that time. <laughs> no further comments. No further comments. Um, yeah, otherwise it will be used against me in court. <laughs> Right, I talk too much, but hey, thank you so much, guys. Anyone else with questions, guys, listen, just contact me through my WhatsApp. And I mean, Ben is always happy, always mm -hmm. right, Ben. No, 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 no. <laughs> Get any related to inf infection control, even if it's not a Tuesday, flick him, uh, just, uh, just ask whatever you have. I'll throw you to Ben. Oh. I will answer those. I only answer questions about hand hygiene. Hey, somebody was asking something the other day. What was it? I can't remember. We'll answer it next time. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Until until next oh, week. Oh, hi guys. I need help. What was that one? I have pimples developing on my chest. Um, that's um. Junior Juju. Hi. 
Pimples can be caused for many reasons. Look very carefully at the pimple and see, is there a hair, as in body hair, coming out of each pimple? And is there a little red spot at the bottom of that hair? That would be called folliculitis. Follicle is a fancy word for a hair. And if you get redness at the base of a, of a hair, um, then that's just a tiny infection around the base of the hair uh, over many hairs. Be aware, some people uh, use hair epilation, which is, in other words, shaving the hair or wax removing it out. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, we have pulled the When I come back to the microbiome, our skin has 10,000 bacteria per square centimeter. That's our normal first line of protection. And it is like a lawn with grass on it. Every lawn has a little bit of weed, but it doesn't matter amongst everything else. But if you go to a lawn, nice green lawn, with a spade and poke the spade into the lawn and give it a wriggle and go away and leave it, it's the little bit of weed that was in the lawn that was not causing any problem, suddenly has no competition and can start causing minor infections. That's the same rather than putting a spade into the earth, if we pull a hair out, that's the equivalent of putting a spade into our, our earth on our skin, if you like. So that's one possibility. Um, uh, I'll come back on that, Rutendo. Um, so little blackheads, etc. cetera, um, depending on your age, we can have hormonal changes, teenagers and early 20s. It's very common. It just goes of its own accord in due course. Um, there are one or two, they tend to be little bacterial pimples. Uh, sometimes, not nearly so common, we can have a yeast causing those pimples. And something like Selsun shampoo, I'm not sure if it's available in Africa, which has got selenium sulfide in it. It's the old-fashioned treatment, but it still works. Crazy. Uh, mm. Selsun shampoo or the topical shampoo, if you can get it, uh, Nizoral is a trade name that contains ketoconazole that will help some. But on the whole, just just wash, don't overwash. And if you have been shaving the hair off your chest or anything, just try not doing that for a while. Ben, um, you yes. know what? I'm just thinking, what? I used to have that problem, but not on my chest, obviously, somewhere else, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well. what happened is it was because I used to shave and yeah. then when I started waxing, you know what they call the Brazilian? Yeah. That's right. They, so that's what, that's what really, it I started having uh, what they call ingrowns. They were really yeah. bad and they'll be itchy and yeah. really, really bad. But I started using this uh, bump eraser, like this cream. It's quite expensive in New Zealand, but it really worked. What's and it called? I'm telling, What's huh? it called? Uh, Mary Paste. I'll take a photo of it and check it on my uh, on the comment section later. Oh. Can you see that? Oh, bump eraser. And does it have what the active ingredient is in it? God. Okay, let me see if I can read this. Water, propylene, glycol, glycerols. Uh, ben, I'll take a photo and send it to you. Goodness, it's too okay. little. That just sounds like. It's, it works, which is number one. That's the main thing. It and, does work new, yeah, but this little is like thirty-five bucks. It's like crazy. Oh, wow, that is expensive. I know, but it works. It works. Yeah. So blackheads is likely to be a bacterial junior juju, a bacterial one, and and um, don't if you do shave or wax hair, just try not doing that for a while. Retendo, um, the question: smelly dark urine. Is it a sign of infection? No, it is not. Uh, so smelly urine, dark urine tends to be, unless it was bloodstained, dark urine tends to be more concentrated urine. So if it's hot and we haven't been drinking so much, water, for instance, then it'll get darker and smell more. It's just a function of how concentrated the urine is. Smelly urine can be caused by some foods. So asparagus is a classic one. Um, uh, asparagine um, gives a very strong smelling urine. Uh, smelly urine can also be, and this is important to understand, our bladder is not necessarily sterile at all. 
So we can have large numbers of bacteria growing normally in our bladder. And if we do not have pain or difficulty, that's normal. It will make a smelly, turbid urine, but it is not an infection. And people used to think, and doctors used to think, well, now we know it's there, we might as well treat it and get rid of it. That's where it gets really interesting. If you've got lots of bacteria growing in your bladder and you do not have frequency or pain or difficulty passing urine, that's actually protective, like yogurt. And those bacteria, I'm going to call them wussy bacteria, they're attaching to the bladder wall on the inside and they stop any more or prevent any more aggressive bacteria that that come up the um, urethra, they prevent them from getting attached to the bladder wall. And bacteria have to attach to the bladder wall before you can get an infection. They, you don't get an infection just by bladder, by bacteria floating free in the urine. So if, for instance, you were to get an antibiotic and treat um, those bacteria, because your urine may be turbid, if you were to treat them and get rid of them, it may seem like a good idea, but when more aggressive bacteria come up the urethra, they will no longer have trouble attaching to the bladder wall because those protective ones that you had, they suddenly, they've gone, you've treated them and they've gone. To cut a long story short, if you treat large numbers of bacteria in your bladder, when you do not have specific frequency symptoms, if you treat it and get rid of them, you're subsequently more likely to catch clinical infection with symptoms because you've removed the protective ones. So don't do it. Don't treat if you don't have symptoms. So that was quite a long-winded um, reply, but I hope it. I hope that um, uh, explains that for you. Dark yellow urine. So the then dark is it does it not like uh, you know what type of smell she's getting. Doesn't matter what type of smell, and the dark, dark urine tends to, some foods can cause yellow, and some medications can cause yellow, but dark yellow, dark urine that's smelly tends to be because you're not drinking so much. It might be oh, yeah. really hot, it's pretty hot oh, phase. You're sweating more of your fluid out, and so the urine gets, um, uh, the urine gets more concentrated. There's not an issue with that. Routine for how long have you had it for? Isn't that does it, isn't that like important as well, Ben? Like if she had it for months, then honestly, like, do you think it's because she hasn't been drinking well? Or that's right. If you were to drink a whole lot more, you may find it's not so dark. If you actively drink water, and you may find oh, it's not so dark now, and um, that would be a good sign. If you didn't, as uh, Katina mentioned, if you didn't normally have uh, yellow urine, but it is now, have you gone on to a new medication or are you eating any different food that you don't normally uh, eat that could turn it yellow? But the smelly, if you've got, if you do not have frequency and this urea, it probably just means there's lots of bacteria there, but if there's no symptoms, no pain or difficulty passing urine, it's, um, it's nearly always quite all right just to leave it. Okay. All right. Maybe that's another one who needs my number. Routine, yep. my number. And uh, obviously, she's not going to send us a photo of the urine. She's going to tell you <laughs> whether it, after you drinking, know. how many yeah. liters of water, roughly, a, a some day? People, some people would say two liters a day, but if I you. Think you uh, it's quite a, quite a lot. You just try drinking more or see if it gets any better, but it may still stay smelly. That's quite all right, but it quite likely reduce the smelliness by drinking more. Mm, if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll connect you with There's the doctor. There's wrong with large numbers of bacteria in your bladder. It seems weird and everyone used to treat it, but now don't, because if you treat it you're, with an antibiotic, you're more likely to then get a clinical proper urinary tract infection. You've got rid of your protective yogurt type bacteria. So a smelly duck urine, no and other sign. Maybe probably most, not. That's right. The most common. 
was it too the most common would be that that is normal but um it may get darker and smell more by um because you're not drinking as much as perhaps you could do don't suddenly drink a whole lot in the afternoon because you'll be up all night going to the loo and try drinking more in the morning no ben don't drink too much in the evening i drink a lot like okay. I'm now, but like after like 9 p.m i'm gonna be up until 11. i won't that's drink anything that's what i said don't drink too much more in the afternoon or evening evening <laughs> um, drink if you're going to drink more start drinking it when you get up for breakfast and rehydrate then it'll save you um running for the low i once did an experiment um a medical experiment and they had about 15 people and we had to drink as much as we could um for um three days and keep the urine and give it to the researchers then drink as little as we could for three days and keep it and give it to the researchers and drink as much and i drank more than anyone else in the high fluid days and i drank less than anyone else in the low fluid days but the high fluid ones i was up every half hour on that um this is more important this lady here she wants lunch with you and me and me ben this is more important than any other infection this one is very highly yeah. infectious yes we'll, definitely come to South Africa yeah, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have lunch with you Ellen. no trouble at all <laughs> Do you want to read it, Katina, or not? I can. Um, He's like, is that normal? Oh, that's Tinashe. I think he did ask something before. Is that normal to have uh, my private part itching, right? And some um, white things between my legs? If not normal, what is the cure, please? I've gone to public hospitals and they only gave a cure which never worked. So itching there, Ben, and some white things between. I. Uh, okay. So there are just a few things. I think, yeah, his legs. Yeah. Just a couple of things I need to know. Um, the no, it's not normal to have private pad itching. If the white things between your legs, if that's actually in the vagina uh, on the mucosal surface, that could be a yeast, candida, or a yeast, and. Often it's a white discharge as well, but white specks on the mucosal, on the on the wet parts. Um, and so you'd get nystatin or another anti-yeast type thing for that. Um, because a yeast can be itchy and have white specks. If the white um is in your pubic hair itself not on the mucosa not on the vagina but on the actual uh, hair itself that could be a parasite um so and that would be more like an anti-insecticide to um to treat that so it just depends if um um it's actually on the hair these little white specks in the hair um or if it's actually on the on the moist on the vaginal part um so i think he's male pardon it's not, i think he's a boy i think he's a male oh it's a male is it all right um so yeah. one no it's not normal to be itching um just depends what those white things look like if it's on the skin um it, is it a parasite or not would why between my legs okay yeah. then, uh, and sometimes for instance even if there's little pustules the white parts can just be little bits of serous fluid coming out of the pustules that then dry up and go white um so there are a number of possibilities once again perhaps if you send a photo of it to um to nice you send me a message and i'll give you uh ben's whatsapp number and you can send it directly to ben in case you don't want me to see some some bits you can oh. send it directly to ben i think that is oh. that all right ben yep that's fine okay Masha, you send me a message and then i'll link you there so that like you know you you might think katina now knows my bits uh i don't want to know <laughs> yeah please just don't pass my um what's happened on to hundreds of others i've already i'm getting sick of winning 10 million dollars every um uh, scam, I know. Did I get scam every week 
remember when I tried to search on Google. So he says they gave him some hypo solution. I don't know what that is, Ben. But then it could be hypochlorite. Could be hypochlorite, perhaps. Oh, just selling. It could be hypo. Who, who knows? Um, so maybe just say what the solution says. When I tried to search on Google, the similar picture with the condition was written acne fungi. That's an unusual expression, acne fungi. Um, with itchiness, uh, yeah, I'd, need to, I'd need to say it clinically. Um, yeah, so, so take a photo. If it doesn't show your past, you can send it to me. But if it shows uh, your past, then send it to Ben directly. I'll, 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 I'll give you his WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No trouble. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we need to just start a group of like infection control questions from Africa and people can just come in there and ask questions. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, You're very I'm welcome, sorry. Chendo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let us know how it goes. Let us know how you go, Rutendo, or if you've got any other symptoms. Me, you know what, Ben? I don't like any funny symptoms down there. With my urine and my, my vagina, I don't want anything. And I'm telling you, Ben, I don't want anything. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. Yep. I'll be my GP opening legs every week if I have to. Yep. I OCD. OCD. Nice and, <laughs> nice and clean. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hypo solution, uh, Tanashi. Just um, maybe if it says more than that on the bottle does it say hypochlorite or hyposaline or what does it say it would just be nice to know as well when you if you send a picture through yeah. um if it's if it is fungi if it's a tinea then um lamisole it's lamisole cream is generally the best thing to treat with if it's a tinea we would tend to see the tinea between our toes especially the little toe Cracking and redness mm. between the top. Okay, dog. There we are. I must get back to it. We've we've had almost an hour now. I know. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Okay. So if there's any more questions, guys, just uh flick them through. I've put my number there, and uh, you guys feel free to send me. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate. Okay, Tinashe, my number is there. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. And it's been an hour. There we go, Ben. No symptoms, only that I took antibiotics, amoxicillin, um, day two taking them. Oh, so she's already been given uh antibiotics fee. All right, okay. We'll see how she goes with that, but drink water as well. Lots so of water. Drink of water. If Personally, if you don't have urinary symptoms, as in pain or difficulty, I am wary about taking antibiotics because it changes your whole microbiome of your gut flora, which in turn, we're just starting to realize a lot more now, which in turn can change your immunity. And um, let it, let it we take oh, antibiotics if we really need It's probably a five-day course, so let it finish and then, but drink water as well lots of water cheek like seriously. Water in the morning so you're not up all night <laughs> <laughs> ben she's young she's very young you can see she's so like she's just as young as me <laughs> in our 15s and 20s you see she may be able to hold two or three glasses of water in a bladder all night but um <laughs> us older ones but, uh, our um, muscles aren't so good on the bladder by that stage you know, I do that, you know, like when I've got my races the next day, there are times where I load myself with like, um, you know, the night before I spend yeah. the whole day hydrating, hydrating. And then at night, I feel like I need to load myself with water tonight before uh, the race tomorrow. So up to like 10 p.m. I'm still drinking water. And guess what? I have a sleepless night because I'm running to the bathroom the whole night. Pretend I've got a gorgeous child there too. What's kicky kicky mean? Please. No, okay, only people from Zimbabwe understand it, Ben. Uh, it's our it? laughing. Uh, what? Did you hear? I'm laughing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks a wonderful term, kiki kiki. I like that. Exactly. So when, whenever you find anything funny, you say kiki kiki. I want you to send me a message and say kiki kiki next time. Please do. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> you go, yeah, we go, ha, 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 no, in Zimbabwe, it's kiki, kiki, only in Zimbabwe, only in Zimbabwe. <laughs> and what's the name? What's the name? 
It just means ha ha ha. You okay. see? Okay. Yeah. Because okay. so, okay. we're not like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, you're gonna learn so much about Zimbabwe, man. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Africa in general. All right, this chick here, so Ellen, my Vemsika, and I will, will definitely come to Africa. Ben, I think we need to, 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 to plan a trip to Africa as soon as the borders open because I promise people I'm coming to Zambia and South Africa and Tanzania. I don't know about you. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to have lunch. Hey guys, thank you so much. My my dinner is cool. Have you had dinner, Ben? Uh, just a little bit. Yep, I'm going to go back and have some more now. I was waiting oh. for somebody to get back from their run. I should have gone down oh. there. I actually thought when I said 40 minutes, I thought that would be enough for you to eat and, uh, you know, I have a glass of wine. You're on your way. You'll just be a minute or two. You'll catch me when you get back. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Oh, I feel terrible. Sorry. But, yeah, That's it's all right. right. <laughs> Okie okay, doke. Until next week. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much. And if you have any questions, my number is there. Flick, uh, flick your questions and I'll connect you with, with, with Ben. Just don't offer him $10 million, please. He's got enough money this to, to last him until the day he dies, whenever that is. <laughs> Anyone that offers me $10 million, it goes into the spam. <laughs> And you stop offering me your ten, your half of your ten million, please, because you were like, "Do you want half of it?" <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, guys, have a good day. Then you can end the broadcast from there. Um, okay, is, guess what? It's free over here. That's why I ended up putting on this. Oh well. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.